In this series of example, I'm going to show you how to calculate the EPS after share buyback. So before the share buyback, the company's earnings per share or EPS is $7.20 and the company plans to buy back 100,000 shares at the current share price of $80 and the company has a total of 5 million shares outstanding. The share buyback or share repurchase will be funded by debt with an after-tax cost of debt of 6%. So to calculate the EPS after the share buyback, we will need to calculate the total earnings or the net income and then we will minus the after-tax cost of borrowing. Okay, in this case, how much uh, does the company have to borrow? So since they are going to buy back 100,000 shares at $80, so the total value of the shares repurchase will be $8 million, okay, which is 100,000 times uh, $80 there. So if they borrow $8 million and the after-tax cost of debt is 6%, then the interest expense after tax would be about 480000 Okay, so the EPS after buyback would be the net income, okay, which is 5 million shares times $7.20. Okay, then we minus the after-tax interest expense, which is 6% times $8 million. In the denominator, we will take the number of shares outstanding 5 million minus the number of shares repurchased 100000 so in this case, the net income or earnings is 36 million. The after-tax interest expense is 480,000, and the number of shares outstanding after buyback is 4.9 million. So with that, the EPS after buyback will be seven dollars and twenty-five cents, which is an increase over the EPS before the buyback. Now, why is there an increase in the EPS after the buyback? If we look at the company's earnings yield before the share buyback which is the EPS of 720 before the buyback divided by the current share price, there will be about 9%. And this earnings yield is greater than the after-tax cost of debt. Okay, so in, in the case where the earnings yield is greater than the after-tax cost of debt, then the EPS will increase after the share buyback. Now, what if the after-tax cost of debt is 10%? Okay, which is higher than the cost of debt in example 1, which is 6%. So now we have to recalculate the after-tax interest expense, which is 10% times $8 million. That would be $800,000. So with that, the EPS after buyback would actually decline to $7.18. Okay, so there's a drop there. So if we were to then compare the earnings yield versus the after-tax cost of debt, now we'll see that the earnings yield of 9%. Okay, it's lower than the after-tax cost of debt. So we will expect the EPS to fall after the share buyback. In example 3, what if the share buyback is funded by excess cash? Okay, in other words, the company is not going to borrow money to buy back the shares. They are going to rely on their existing balance of cash if they, we assume that there is a pool of cash okay, of uh, at least $8 million there, which they can use to buy back the shares. So in this case, they are not going to borrow any money. So there will be no additional interest expense okay, from the share repurchase. So we'll just take the $36 million minus zero and then we divide by 4.9 million. So that would give us definitely a higher EPS after buyback okay, of $7.35.